Vision City Mall robbed of cash and goods. Calls for schools to be ready for 2016. And FC POM put on a stunning performance. This is National MTV News with Hope Imaka. Good evening and thank you for joining me for Saturday's news. Port Moresby's Vision City Mega Mall came under siege this morning as reports of a break and enter stopped the supermarket's operations. Assistant General Manager of the mall, Anderson Ting, told MTV News three suspects broke in the supermarket between 2 a.m. and 3 a.m. this morning. He said two of the suspects hid in the shop till daybreak but were spotted by an employee which alerted the shop's security. Police were quick to arrive on the scene, however, did not apprehend any of the suspects. Mr. Ting also revealed an undisclosed amount of money was stolen, including other goods in the grocery section of the mall. The shop resumed business after 11 a.m. this morning. Justice Alan David this afternoon adjourned the bail applications for 11 soldiers detained at the military cells at Mary Barracks in Port Moresby to Monday the 11th of January 2016. The soldiers, all about the age of 40, were brought into the city from Como in Hela province following allegations of misconduct while on operations. These soldiers have ranks of sergeant, corporal and warrant officers. The bail applications filed by lawyers representing the members of the PNG Defence Force were based on four grounds. They include the number of months the soldiers were away from their families, which is over 64 weeks. The holding cells were too crowded and cannot accommodate over 10 men, and all were fathers and sole breadwinners. However, lawyer representing the state objected the grounds, arguing that the applicants were asked to withdraw the coma operations but did not follow instructions. The allegations made against them were serious and despite the soldiers detained at the holding cell, they are still able to enjoy privileges that persons in a normal police custody may not. These privileges include having access to family visits, phones and three meals in a day. After listening to arguments presented by the four commissioned lawyers for almost three hours, Judge David adjourned the applications to 9.30 a.m. on Monday, 11th January. The 11 were formally charged on 31 December 2015 for misconduct while on operation. And with the bail applications to be decided on Monday, the 11 will spend two more nights at the holding cells. Tekla Gunga, National, MTV News. The Acting Secretary for Education, Dr. Uke Kombra, is calling on all schools around the country to use the next two weeks to clean up their schools before the 2016 school year begins. In a statement, Dr. Kombra said it is important that students return to an environment that is clean and ready. The Acting Education Secretary said past years students were denied classes with the first week used for cleaning up. Dr. Combra called on school administrations and management to seriously put this instruction into action. Teachers will resume Janu on January 25th, while students will begin classes on the 1st of February for 2016 school year. Stay with us for more local and overseas news after this break. Welcome back to the news. The National Housing Corporation has successfully obtained an interim court order restraining the Civil Aviation Safety Authority, National Airports Corporation and PNG Air Services Limited from holding legal interest in all properties formerly vested in the Civil Aviation Authority. The court order effectively bars the three aviation enterprises from exercising any rights over all properties owned by the former CAA. Managing Director John Degger said with the interim order on foot, the status quo remains and that the NHC is in control of the aerodrome and non, all non-aerodrome land and properties in question. The matter returns to the courts on 15th of this month. Hundreds of Catholic Christians congregated yesterday at the site in Jordan where Jesus Christ is believed to have been baptized by John the Baptist. 
Almost 500 pilgrims from around the world and countries swamp the Epiphany Festival, which is also celebrated around the world as an important religious event on the Christian calendar. Father Rifat Bader from the Latin Patriarchate of Jerusalem said it was especially important to commemorate the event in light of the difficult circumstances facing the region. It is very special and very important because uh, we know that the region is burning uh, on fire. Uh, there is a lot of uh, wars, a lot of blood shed every day. So this, this uh, site is in a safe country, which is Jordan. That's why the celebration today will be an invitation for all our friends to come come and visit this is a safe country don't don't be afraid you will you will find uh, this uh, peaceful uh, and serenity uh, in this uh, holy site the congregation attended a procession headed by the latin patriarch of jerusalem for 12 who addressed the press before the mass we are uh, aware about the entire situation we are living in all the middle east we cannot speak about our christians alone because they are not living in a ghetto they are integral part of all the population, suffering with the same suffering and hoping that something new good will happen in this uh, new year. One of the pilgrims, Basma Saman, attends the Mass at the baptism site every year with her family. I came today to participate in this event every year in the baptism site, uh, Jordan River. And wish, we wish uh, for uh, we wish peace for everybody. The Jordan River was a military restricted area for almost two decades after the West Bank was occupied by Israel in the 1967 war. It was a site of much conflict before a peace deal was signed between Jordan and Israel in 1994. Venice Night, MTV World News. A man from the Middle East who came to the United States as a refugee was charged with making a false statement involving ter terrorism and ordered held without bail by a federal judge in California yesterday. 23-year-old Oz Muhammad Yunus Al-Jayab is a Palestinian who was born in Iraq and came to the United States in 2012 as a refugee from Syria. After the hearing, public defender Benjamin Galloway said his client posed no threat to the United States and reports in the last 24 hours have gloss, grossly mischaracterized the nature of the case. Jayab was one of the two Middle Eastern men whose arrests on terrorism-related charges U.S. authorities announced on Thursday. Another Palestinian man who was born in Iraq, Omar Faraj Saeed al-Hardan, was arrested in Houston. They are the latest in the series of similar cases in U.S. campaign against extremism. North Korean officials say the South's propaganda broadcasts are pushing them to the brink of war. They made the announcement days after launching the country's first hydrogen bomb. CNN is the only broadcaster reporting from inside Pyongyang. On the front page of North Korea's main state newspaper, Kim Jong-un signing the order to test what the regime calls a hydrogen bomb. Many outside observers question the claim. But there's no doubt among these students lined up outside Pyongyang science and technology center the north koreans say we're the first foreign media to visit the brand new building it looks like the symbol of science north korean researcher lee Wan believes this week's nuclear test ensures peace even as much of the world calls it a dangerous provocative act it is only for the self-defense so do north koreans want to be friends with americans why not uh but the current political climate makes that impossible. Years of isolation began during the previous Kim regimes. Young future scientists, doctors, and other students have little or no access to the internet, only a state-controlled intranet. So you see a lot of students doing research here in the library, and they're using North Korea's version of the iPad. They study surrounded by photos of their leaders. So tank number three, one, two, and models of North Korean weapons. It means that our nation is very powerful. Medical student Lee Ju Sheng sits beneath a replica of a rocket that launched a North Korean satellite into orbit. This is only for peaceful purpose. Oh, we don't want war. But outside experts accuse North Korea's space program of being a front for ballistic missile development. Missiles that could someday carry nuclear warheads across the region or even the world. 
Chukai Sports is next. We have NSL and Rugby League. Stay tuned for the details. Chukai Sports. Welcome to Chukai Sports. In football, FC Port Moresby made their presence known today in round six of the Telecom National Soccer League in Port Moresby with a commanding six goals to nil over peers who were united. Shane Soroya with this report. Pierce Huawei United went into the match with much enthusiasm, led by former Hekari utility Ericsson Komeng. The first half was rather encouraging for the first-timers, as they press on with their game attackers. But FC Pom thought otherwise with the wealth of experience in the likes of Neil Hans, Cyril Muta and Captain Roland Bala. FC Pom's one-touch play allowed the running forward to convert five goals, with cutout crosses far wide and true balls from the middle. Roland Bala and Neil Hans scored twice with Jacob Subur adding the extras going into the sheds five goals up. The second half was no different with just under 10 minutes of play and FC Pom with good build-up play from the back line to send John Roberts steaming down the line before sending a superb cross to find awaiting Neil Hans, who fired a stunner to bring scores up to six points clear of PS Huawei United. Huawei, on the other hand, trying to create chances switching plays from midfield to the side and at times Roger Sakin linking up with Ericsson Komeng to find loopholes in FC Pom's defense but just couldn't get past goalkeeper Charlie Lepani. Komeng's effort to create opportunities up front was either cut short or blocked by Cyril Muta-led defense, and Pierce Huawei's numerous foul plays cost the team dearly. FC Pom stamping their mark in round six with a commanding 6-0 win over Pierce Huawei United, and Captain Roland Bala was named man of the match. Shane Saroya, National MTV Sports. Turning overseas and London Broncos coach Andrew Henderson is delighted by the chance to work with new signing Israel Eliab. Coach Henderson told Love Rugby League Eliab's energy is what excites him. And Henderson went on to mention he is confident of Eliab's bringing a different dynamic to the team because of his leadership achievements through the sport. The former PNG Hunters and Kumuls captain signed with the English Super League club London Broncos earlier this week. Eliab is expected to join the club later this month. The an annual NRL competition is set to kick off on Thursday, the 3rd of March, with a total of 16 participating clubs. The first match will see Parramatta Eels against Brisbane Broncos at the Pertex Stadium in Sydney, Australia. The 2016 season will witness the 19th year of the National Rugby League in Australia and New Zealand. The 2016 NRL season will be the 109th season of professional rugby league in Australia. The pre-season will start in New Zealand with the annual Auckland Nines, which is now into its 30th competition and will be followed by the All-Stars match scheduled for next month at Suncorp Stadium in Brisbane. He puts it high, it wobbles around towards Tupac. Highlights of the 2016 season include the grand final rematch between the North Queensland and Brisbane on Good Friday at Suncorp Stadium, an Anzac round which will include traditional blockbusters St. George Illawarra vs. Sydney Roosters, followed by Melbourne Storms vs. the Warriors on Anzac Day, and a Saturday night doubleheader at Suncorp Stadium in Round 10, featuring the Melbourne Storms vs. the Cowboys and the Sea Eagles vs. the Broncos. And Big Jason will play the ball straight down the middle, coming down the middle corner. The 2016 NRL player movement are expected to have an effect on the 26 rounds of competition. The line. Pressure on their own. Goal on him. There's Matai again. Round one will kick off on Thursday, the 3rd of March, and we'll see the Parramatta Eels against the Brisbane Broncos, who fell one point short of winning the 2015 NRL Premiership. Jamie Sapiens, National MTV Sports. Former Dutch discus thrower Ria Stallman, who won Olympic gold 32 years ago, has admitted doping in the later stages of her career. Stallman said in an interview with Dutch broadcaster that she used anabolic steroids in the run-up to the 1984 Games in Los Angeles. 
Stallman said in the last two and a half years of her career, she used a light dosage of anabolic steroids, 5 to 10 milligrams a day. The 64-year-old said back then it was also prohibited, but she could do it without any risk during training because there were no out-of-competition controls. Stallman cleansed gold in Los Angeles with a best throw of 65.36 meters, half a meter ahead of silver medalist Leslie Denise of United States and nearly two meters clear of dead place Romanian Florenta Krasinescu. She retired soon after the LA Games and later in 1984 was named the Dutch Sportsperson of the Year. Stallman said she began doping after realizing she could not compete with more powerful Eastern European athletes. She said she wanted to go to the Olympics as an insignificant Dutch thrower and she visited Eastern Europe a couple of times and her personal best record was 56 meters. Stallman said during the warm-up she would see all those muscular athletes walking around and they would beat her with 15 meters difference. So she thought, what can I do to beat them at the Olympics? Now, if you can beat them, join them. And that's what she did. Shane Saroya, National MTV Sports. And that concludes our sporting actions for today. Stay with us for the weather details after this break. Kai Sports. True Kai Sports. Your weather forecast for tonight and tomorrow in the southern region, evening showers for Port Moresby, Kerma and Popandetta. Mostly fine for Alatau and fine and windy for Daru. In the Masai region, brief showers for Lay City and fine for Medang, Banimo and Wibek. In the New Guinea Islands, mostly fine for Lorengau, Kokopo and Kaviang and brief showers for Buka and Kimbe. And in the Highlands region, brief evening showers, then morning fog for all centres. That's how we end the news, sports and weather for Saturday, the 9th of January 2016. From all of us, good night.